Hey everybody, today we're going to reinstall the carburetor on this Holley Davidson twin cam engine. This is the last in a series of major maintenance to be conducted on this bike. In previous videos it was disassembled, completely cleaned, reassembled with new parts and an upgrade kit, put back together, better than new. But then I had to focus my attention on the cam chain tensioners, so that was the next project to happen. I posted a separate two part series that entails the complete procedure for replacing the cam chain tensioners. This job also provided an opportunity for the inspection and cleaning and resealing of different areas around the bike as well as the inspection of the lifters, push rod tubes, and what have you. But now we're ready to drop this car back in and get this bike back on the road, so let's get started. We have for this project pieces from our carb rebuild kit that we're going to use for the installation of this carburetor. Removing this piece of paper towel I've left in here, I'm going to remove this old seal because I do have a new seal in the kit. First off, I'll be sure to clean this area of the manifold thoroughly with carb cleaner. I used a lubricant on the o-ring and then I pressed the o-ring right onto the manifold. The lubricant was also applied to this side of the carburetor. Being mindful of the position of the choke cable pointing outwards, the choke cable is pushed in through the bike so that it points directly towards its bracket. The end of the cable is negotiated through the bracket on the other side. And now the carb is able to butt up against the manifold. On the other side, we can see that cable clear in the bracket coming right up to it. I turn the carb to its side and I install the cable. Make sure the spring is inside on this rear one. We can see right here. And this is easy to do provided the carb is not yet connected to the manifold. I have more than enough room to work. I drop this piece in. And there we go, that one's in. And then the front one. And I'm going to open the throttle body to make room to get the front one in. And hold it open with my finger. Drop this one in, get it through the slit. I'm not worried about cable tension yet. I just want it connected. And there we go. The o-ring was stuck to the cob. I put it back on the manifold. The cob is now wiggled back and forth, pressed into the o-ring. It's seated fully. Showing it being seated fully from overhead. Wiggling back and forth until the cob's all the way in. There it is. The vacuum line is then reattached into the carburetor. I give the cob a wiggle back and forth to make sure it looks like everything is seated okay, and it looks like it is. I gently twist the throttle and you see it does move, but it is definitely in need of some adjustment. In the meantime, I'll turn my attention to choke sliding the whole unit up onto the bracket. Then I'll turn the nut to tighten it in position. You can see right now it needs to be adjusted for tension. It won't stay out on its own. So I'll lock down this nut with a 7 16 I'm using a stubby wrench to fit in there, not hit anything else around it. Now I'll check the tension and I'll make adjustments accordingly till I got what I feel to be the proper tension for this choke knob. On to the next adjustment, which will be the throttle cables. I know that both of these adjustments are going to need to come out to shore up the slack. As I open them up, I'm checking for just the right amount of play on both cables. Just a small amount. I don't want them taut making the tiniest adjustments accordingly to achieve this goal. Neither cable is loose, but they're not tight. They have a nice bounce to them. Test it out, and they're set up just fine now. I put anti-seize on the threads of the adjusters here, and then slid the boots over. I'm going to take a minute to drop some paper towel in these breather holes here on the left, and this one on the right. Because I want to take a razor blade and score off all this crap that's on here, maybe some sealant or something, and clean these up before I continue and pull a paper towel out and do the other one. I don't know exactly what that is, but I want it gone. I've since washed all this, it was pretty nasty, but I've cleaned it up before installation. We're going to put it on now with a new gasket provided in the kit. It marries up just like this perfectly. These hoses rotate that they align up directly over the holes like so and we're just going to hold the gasket in place as we push it up against the cob lining up the screw holes 
just like that. And we're going to turn these three lugs right through by hand. Once these are at full seat, back them off about three full turns. So I have these breathables and these three washers. A larger ID washer with a bit of a curve in it. Another large ID washer with no curve in it. And then a smaller ID washer. And we can see the larger washer with the curve in it. This is going to go in first. And the curve is going to sort of bellow towards the front of this nut. Just like that. The second larger ID washer will meet it just on the other side of this bracket as the bolt goes through. We could see it going through right now and meeting it. We leave it right there. The smaller ID washer will be all the way in the back sitting right on the cylinder. It'll be pushed into position and this bolt will go through that. When everything lines up, it should go through and then we could start screwing in this bolt into the cylinder through all three washers and the bracket. The other one's done in the same manner and then both are tightened down in tandem. Both are gently snugged with a three quarter wrench. These three bolts can now be hand tightened to full seat. By the book you could torque these bolts to 140 inch pounds. These three bolts are snugged down. With Jason here, we're now going to take a minute to install the gas tank back onto the motorcycle. Aside from the mounts, there's a fuel line, vacuum line connection, as well as the wires for the speedometer. We wanted to go with a new air filter but didn't have one. We're going to use the old one just to finish this video. The fuel line was reconnected to the carb and clamped. And Jason used a new crimp clamp coming off the tank. The filter holes are not symmetrical and they only line up one way for installation. Three nuts secure the filter to the carb. 716 socket at 110 inch pounds will secure these three bolts holding on the air filter. Finally, the air filter cover goes over the air filter centrally located. The chrome nut secures that on. Hand tighten a full seat. And this is snugged down with 516's hex, ensuring that that cover is straight before it's snugged down. And that concludes the reinstallation of a carburetor on a Harley Davidson twin cam engine. I hope you found this video enjoyable, entertaining, and informative. Do me a favor, hit that like button down below. Helps me out a lot when you do. And hit that subscribe button for more videos like this when they come out. When the next video comes out, a link will be posted in the top right corner. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply? <laughs>